What's happening guys, it's Sir William and today on Badass Builds, we're gonna be taking a look at Jim's 2003 Overland Sequoia. There's not too many Sequoias or full size for that matters out there killing the Overland game, but Jim is with his Sequoia, so let's take a look. Jim, take us through this 2003 Sequoia that you have. There's a ton of work in it. Yeah. Now, it looks on the outside that there's just a whole bunch of stuff bolted together. You and I both know after talking about it for a little bit, there's a lot of hidden treasures to this Sequoia. Bumper, we have a Addicted Off-Road. Okay. Uh, Scotty built this bumper, uh, first bumper that ever went into production, production sold. He built one for his wife's Sequoia and I kind of pushed him to put it into production. It's all the first gen Tundras, first gen Sequoias. And the only difference I think in the 05, 07 Sequoia, um, there's some horns right here in the body, but it'll still work. So that's one of the things that I really like about the Sequoia is the fact that Jim has put this thing together and there's really not a lot of aftermarket support out there. So if anybody's ever looked for Sequoia parts, it's it can be challenging at times. So then it goes a little bit beyond that because if you look down here, we've got things like right here, will you explain this to me? So it's got onboard air, mm -hmm. uh, it's got air lockers, ARB front and rear. And so I've got a quick safety chuck here for airing up tires for the front. There's one in the rear. See, it's got a two and a half pound uh, air tank in the rear running by air. And then you got some recovery points up here, which are nice. Yep. You keep them from jingling with a safety tire. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got some insulators in here to kind of yeah. keep them from moving. And the pin, actually, if you just take a zip tie and run it right there, the pin is not going to come loose and fall out. Right, so. or somebody won't run up and take them. Somebody steal my trash room once they cut it off the, off the track. God, so there are thieving people <laughs> in the overland. Some, somebody, somebody cares <laughs> enough about a trash room to steal it. <laughs> so high lift jack up here. High lift jack. I like it on the uh, the upper tube um, because I don't have a lot of uh, forward visibility. Like when I'm coming up on a trail, like putting it up against a tree or something. So I'm putting it as far as I can. And now visibility from the driver's seat, I can see all the way up, and I can put this up against a tree, up against a rock, up before against you mess anything, anything else before up. I hit anything on the truck. So specifically that's why, Yeah, these. specifically <laughs> those. And it just gives me a good frame of reference. Like this is a big rig and when I'm making turns in the trails, I can actually put this up and get all the way up. Um, I'd love to have a rear, you know, camera in the back. I yeah. hadn't done that yet. What it's size a, is the winch? Uh, it's a VR12 synthetic Warren winch. Um, I tried to fit a, uh, a Xeon, but they're a little bit different on the build. I mean, I still had to cut the bumper a little bit on this side to fit the VR, um, but I would have had to make real serious modi uh, modifications to the bumper in uh, order to, to fit, fit a Xeon in. Okay. I mean, ZR, Xeon's a much better build. I now, mean, how many pounds is this? It's a 12,000. 12,000. I mean, this, this rig probably weighs, I mean, best guess, 6,500. Yeah. 7,000 pounds. 12,000 is so, going to pull you out. Yeah. So we've got the Baja Design lights up there. We've got some more Baja Designs down here, obviously. Yeah, I've been using those for about five or six years. I've they look them. brand new. Yeah, I use them on my dirt bikes. I use them on my car. I use them on all my trucks. Significant difference between the Baja Designs and Amazon lights? Yeah. 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 They don't light follow. pattern, uh, light, the construction, light, or all of it? Everything. Warranty. Yeah. I mean, I've had issues, and they've taken care of it. Um, light output's amazing no moisture gets inside i like the wiring connections wiring connections every, everything you know they are made in the usa which is a rarity um but yeah they're just phenomenal yeah. great company it's one of those deals where you're just going to get what you pay for you do yeah. can can you get a light that costs 30 dollars? Sure. sure yeah but are these you? are going to give you what you want yeah okay so take us through on the inside because obviously this looks a little bit different than um than what they come stock yeah so this truck was supercharged and there's not a lot of aftermarket support for like cracking the ECU on this to tune. Uh, so pull the supercharger. The TUZ 4.7, uh, long tube headers, um, full custom exhaust, high flow cats. Um, it's got a dual length runner, which actually comes off of an 0507 VVTi 2UZ and uh, it's vacuum actuated, you know, Throttle response is better, low end torque's better, high end RPM range is better. Um, I've got uh, dual batteries in this. I'm running two Group 31s. A Group 31 will fit in a stock location, 
but I added another group 31 on the other side. I had to make a couple changes, changed, uh, relocated uh, the power steering reservoir, got solar, solar controller, um, smart relay between. I also run breakers if I need to break those. So I'm charging the battery off like a C Tech. I use all C Tech chargers, they make great chargers. All the ARB, like we said before, it's got ARB front and rear. So there's all the controls for the ARB. One thing I like about this is if you look at the, the wiring on this, I mean, this is not a just throw together thing here. I yeah, mean, this I mean, is it, a... it could use a little cleaning up, but I mean, I try to try to take my time wiring. It this all is works a very well. clean and impressive bill. Thank you. Absolutely. Originally, the uh, injectors come with a four hole injector. The injectors have been replaced with 12 hole injectors. Um, different throttle body on here just because of the intake it had to be a VVTI throttle body with that so it worked it's all the electrical connect connections um, you know to Toyotas always need uh, timing so when I did the timing I always do a radiator so it's got a fresh radiator in it they usually last about 150,000 miles so this one's good for another 120,000 probably it'll take me many years to put that on now I will say <laughs> that there's two things going on here. First, we've got yeah. the aftermarket horn, but yeah, I've got some hella horns, and that's a, a... the PA. <laughs> yeah, I got a. PA. Let me tell you, some of the most fun I've ever had was with a PA system. Now, I know Jim, you wouldn't ride around and talk to people with your PA system. It's, it's, Surely you wouldn't. It's happened. Yeah. <laughs> that is probably one of the most fun mods useful, I've ever put yeah, on something. Fun. It really it's is. Fun. You're about to do something a little different with the front end of this thing, right? Yeah. Um, so the plan was, I mean, originally, I mean, I've been through a lot of stages on this front end. So first thing I ever had was a spacer lift. Um, second thing, uh, went with some old man emu shocks and springs. Um, then... Currently, it's got Icon Extended Travel, um, 700 pound spring, um, SPC uppers. Um, I do the high angle boots on the CVs. Um, then, so the limiting thing is down travel. You got a solution for the yeah, down travel. Yeah, I got travel. a solution. So Dana 44, it's a 1978 high pinion Ford uh, Dana 44. And I've been building that, been posting a lot. Um, there's a handful of SAS Sequoias. Um, I am three link in this one. Uh, it's gonna be on 14 inch coils. Um, there's probably five or six SAS built Sequoias and the majority of them are on either one tons or 44s, but they're on uh, leaf springs. So wow. this will be three linked. Yeah, so, that's yeah. gonna be sweet, yeah. man. I can't wait to see that. Hey, look, stay tuned because after he gets this thing done, we're definitely going to come back. We're definitely going to take a look at it. But as you guys see, this is a sick setup he's going to be putting in here. Now, what's the reasoning that one would want to... I mean, obviously the down travel, but... Yeah, so my, I mean, my thing is, is I'm always trying to learn and do more. And I just, I want to just, I want, I want it under my belt. You know, I, I did a... Say so you did it. Yeah, I mean, I want to have that skill. I had a, did a long travel build on a Forerunner. Um, you know, I did that in 19 hours and I can do it. So basically what he's saying is, is he loves torturing himself <laughs> with that to, yeah. to do this because this is not an easy task. No, I mean, and this is not my job. I mean, I just do yeah. this because I enjoy This is a learning. hobby of his. Yeah, yeah, it's just a hobby. I mean, I'm yeah. a nurse by trade. I mean, that's my profession. And this is, you know, just something to push those limits and, yeah. and learn and, and build. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. I know these guys would be looking forward yeah. to it. Leave a comment down below if you want to see a solid axle swapped Sequoia. Three link. Three link solid axle swapped <laughs> through Sequoia. Yeah, Braking on these Sequoias is pretty limited. Um, so uh, actually it was Scotty from Addicted Off-Road was probably the first one to pioneer doing like a GX470 brake upgrade. And now people have gone even further with the GX460 brake upgrade. It's the same diameter uh, rotor, which is a big brake kit for this. Uh, the rotor is a little thicker, but the pistons in the GX460 calipers are even bigger. So what I'm going to do is on the Dana 44, I'm running, it's a Ford, but I'm running uh, Chevy Knuckles, Chevy Spindles, so it's a six lug. And I'm going to adapt the GX470 brakes to I'm going to adapt the GX470 brakes to the Dana 44. 
these are sliders that you had built and you said that you had them built from someone in Washington? Yeah, I think it was Washington State. It was stubswelding.com. Uh, they were one of the first uh, manufacturers to come out with a uh, slider specifically, weld on slider specifically for the Sequoia. And, um, you know, they're no longer in business, but there's brute force fab that makes sliders for the Sequoia. Uh, kind of a similar setup. Yeah, similar setup. Um, so over the years, I mean, I've been doing the Sequoia platform for five or six years now. And, you know, we do have more products coming to market. We do have more manufacturers. Um, Addicted Off-Road makes sliders. Brute Force Fab makes sliders. Um, there's a handful of others now that are offering sliders, different Okay, so they're out there now. Yeah, there are, there's some. I mean, and that's been the push all the time is to get more product to, to market on this for this vehicle. Well, take us through the back here. Now, obviously you are a true overlander because yeah. you have a trash room. Yeah, we contacted Billy Simmons at uh, Brute Force Fab and we, he asked us to bring a donor truck and we had uh, a donor Sequoia come to his shop for three months. The obligation was to have five people buy in and now this bumper's available. Yeah. So anybody can order this bumper. It's built to... Smart move, Billy. Yeah. Our problem is, is you know, any, any manufacturer that we contact, any anybody, like, doesn't matter. The It's the same story. Either they're a welder down or they're just too busy making Tacoma and Forerunner parts. My favorite part of the whole thing is, is when you look at a lot of off-road vehicles, you know, Forerunners, Land Cruisers, Jeeps, I mean, there's all these parts that are available. And if some variation, everybody's got the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. in yeah. in some sort. That's why I love this. I mean, I, I, I've, I've said this so many times, I put on a, a Sequoia Summit, and that was one thing that I said during the summit when I spoke to everyone is that none of these are the same, and I love it. Like, there's so much creativity because there's no support, it pushes everybody to do something different. I agree 100%. And there's so many different yeah. builds in these. For That's Billy what? and the Brute Force Fab bumpers, he's got, uh, you know, you can do a, a single swing out all the way across and you can have a long table or you can do a right-sided swing out and a left-sided swing out. I camp off of the left side of my truck. Um, I go in and out of the truck. And so I just wanted a spare tire carrier off of the right side. Um, Billy uses like, Amazing parts, great quality spindles. Um, put a little table on here for me so I could use my stove on here when I'm out camping. Yeah, every, I, I really truly believe that people do this that love what they do are basically artists. I mean, Billy amazing welds all over great build quality he didn't say hey man I'm, I'm building something for a sequoia so i'm gonna just half-ass do it i mean he just yeah, he did a great did job yeah. on everything yeah and it shows in all the quality yep. the workmanship here i mean like he said these welds yeah um you know the table design itself uh, my only complaint is these aren't quite big enough to hold a bud light can bud light. yeah it's okay well the thing is now you did this though yeah i did that that is your uh your paper towel holder yeah, right I did a paper towel holder i did it out of delrin put it on the lathe and turned it down a little bit and threaded it and now I got somewhere to put my paper towel. So. <laughs> uh, but the secret of the beer holders is everything is just, you gotta have a flat spot. Yeah, you know? that's it. Those flat surfaces are hard to come by. So right. Billy did a great job integrating the seven pin hitch right into the bumper. Um, tire carrier covers up the license plate. I moved the license plate over here with some VHB tape. You know? Uh-oh, we got a full on bill out back here. Oh, yeah. So we're not just carrying around some Plano boxes. We're we uh we got some stuff going on now this is what i really like so explain to everybody what exactly what exactly is that right so, there so inside this panel um this was originally for i'm trying to think it had some straps in there oh it was a headrest the middle uh row seating had a headrest that came off and on and it went in here so I've actually got a fuse panel, I've got a water pump in here, and I've actually got a fill port right there. And so that is for my onboard water. Um, all I have to do is just hit a switch. I've got a three gallon tank underneath, and uh, I've got onboard water. So, so a three gallon tank underneath, yeah. you fill it up right there, yeah, I fill it and up. you hit the switch and it spits it out right there. Yeah, that's just a quick disconnect for a camelback. For a camelback. 
Um, it's it's very similar. Okay. It's not made specifically by them, but it's very very similar. That is sweet. It's actually a company called I think it's CP CPC that makes these fittings, and actually people use them for uh, like home brewing equipment. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. pretty neat. So you got to be a little. Now take me through the drawer here. We've got uh, 500 pound sliders. Yeah, right. Accuride, um, you know, make wonderful, amazing sliders. I don't think I'd go with anything else. Um, and then you just got you a little piece of aluminum here to yeah, slide up your a cutting board. Channel, get this cutting board out of the way, and then I can access. I've got some hefty my, mate stuff yeah, back here. All my cooking gear and more cooking gear. Uh, National Luna Weekender 55. I've had it for uh, about five years. Good uh, fridges. Yeah, yeah, very good. I've been, yeah. I've been very happy with it. So again, Accuride slides. These are again 400 pound, no, 500 pound slides. Uh, cool thing about these, we got uh, three pair of them. They actually came from, they were used, came from police cars out of uh, Los Angeles. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got an inverter up there, 300 watt Synwave inverter, inverter, and I do a heated mattress pad. <laughs> <laughs> you might have heard of heated seats. This yeah. guy's got a heated mattress yeah, pad. Heated mattress pad, and the controller is on this side. Uh -oh. The problem with any 12 volt, if you're going true 12 volt on any kind of pad or anything heating pad, they have a shutoff time usually of like 30 minutes mm -hmm. or something. And these have a 10 hour shut off. So like oh, auto, okay. So you can just run it basically indefinitely. Yeah. And then it actually does have a button where you can shut off this shut off. So just run forever. A little USB uh, plug in over here. And yeah, a little air, air circulation. It's nice. And then you've got some lights up here. Yep. These are cool little lights. Yep. So interesting. I, yep. So I just tied them in, soldered them into the factory the, switch. So right. they come on and off with the doors opening. Yeah. Yeah. How much light did they put out? Um, it actually, because it's like a fish eye lens. Yeah, that's so what I'm noticing. It comes back to, back to about here. Pretty nice. Yeah, about a yeah. foot back. And that keeps you from having to mess with if you wanted to put something up here, which I know is yeah. kind of common for some people. I've got a couple things. I've got a magnetic uh, knife holder or whatever, utensil yeah. holder. And uh, beverage. Nice. Holder. Yeah. And that doesn't rub? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Get a ladder over here so that way we can stand up on top. Yeah. And so this is a custom roof rack here. So take us through the roof rack because we talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, they don't make a roof rack for the Sequoia or well, do they? They do now. So this was uh, one of the, you know, contacted Prinzu Designs many years ago to make one. And again, same story. Nobody wants to make any parts for the Sequoia. And so I was forced to kind of look and see what I could find locally. Uh, my buddies up at U-Joint Off-Road, uh, specifically Neil up at U-Joint helped me design the roof rack. It's got uh, 200 watt solar panels integrated into the roof rack. It's 80-20 uh, crossbars. Um, lets me mount basically what anything that I want up there. So you got your Pelican boxes yeah. up there. And it's all aluminum. The side panels were aluminum. And uh, yeah, the uh, Gobi, ladder it was originally like on the back of the truck and i just cut it up modified it bolted it to put uh through bolts through the bumper through bolts through the side panels of the rack you like it on the side here huh well i do um it wasn't very useful on the back when i had it so the thing is is when i'm climbing up here you know it's a tall rig so when i'm up on here it gives me something to hold on to and we talked about the fact that we're going to be doing some uh, solid axle business up yeah. front. But take me through the rear because you've also got quite a bit done to the rear, right? Yeah. So the rear is eh, mid to long traveled in the back. I'm running, um, of course, you know, through the whole process. You know, we have a Sequoia community, Facebook page, just uh, Toyota Sequoia Off-Road. And we have a lot of members that are just, everybody's innovated, innovative. Um, so Sal... Rosal and myself figured out which shock would be a long travel shock. And the first shock we used was a Dobinson shock. It was a great shock. And I eventually went to a 2.5 inch Icon. Uh, it was off the front of a Dodge Ram 2500 and it's a reservoir shock, uh, 10 way adjustable. Um, so it ends up being long travel. I'm running a Dobinson spring. No, I'm sorry, an old man emu spring on the rear. Um, it's a five-way linked rear factory solid axle 
and all the links have been replaced with CaliFab links and uh, all the mounts have been cut off and uh, put rough stuff specialty quarter inch mounts all throughout on the axle side, frame side. Um, 488 gears now on 35. The end links, I custom made those myself inside on the lathe. All stainless steel braided brake lines. It's a lot of work, man. Yeah. A lot of work that people don't see. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't see it from the outside. No. Roughly, like when I put it up on the lift, it's roughly twice the travel of the front. Yeah. yeah. And you said for the 35s, you did re-gear it, so that probably helps. What kind of gas mileage are you getting? Uh, probably around town, 12, and on the highway, like 15.5. All right, so obviously you use it. Obviously you take it out. You have a good time. It's built with a purpose, yeah. um, and it serves the purpose. It takes you where you want to go. What is your favorite trip that you've done in this thing, and how many nights have you spent on it? Um, that particular trip, I've probably, when we did Sequoia Summit, I took off two weeks and Sequoia Summit was in Colorado, but we went to Moab first. So we drove from South Carolina to Moab, actually stopped in Colorado first and did uh, Webster Pass, did a couple passes in Colorado, then went to Moab, spent probably four or five days in Moab and then went to Colorado, had Sequoia Summit, had about 18, 15 to 18 rigs at Sequoia Summit. And then we went to the Great Sand Dune National Park after that, then came home. So it was two weeks, slept out of the rig the whole time. Um, no complaints. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you got plenty of room yeah, in that thing. Yeah, this thing looks great. like a two bedroom apartment yeah. compared to my forerunner. Yeah. Right, so you've heard Jim talk about the lathe inside yeah. and uh, we're at Jim's shop and I'm going to take you guys through this shop because I want to show you this shop too. There's going to be some things that you see in here that we're going to talk about later. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button. So that way, whenever I do come up with the future videos, you can see those things. But basically you build all kinds of stuff here. We got yeah. a welder here that's grinding up on some gusseted spindles, and spindles. for his forerunner and, and it's it, just a hobby yeah it's, it's a wood shop <laughs> so about three years ago my best friend this is my best friend's shop and i i was like hey you want to go halves on a lift and he's like yeah so we've been doing trucks and yeah fabricating and and I, you know he let me put a metal shop in basically let's and, be honest yeah. he's been coming here hanging out with his buddies drinking beers and building <laughs> shit that's what he's been doing that's what he's been doing it works though. let's go take it a works. look inside come on in here this is the front end of the shop this office basically an art studio a 3d printer yeah we got a 3d printer over there okay. so i can give you some designs and sure. we can just make some stuff yeah. huh all right so you shared this uh with your buddy like you were telling us about yeah. now he is a full-on artist yeah. um without a doubt as you guys can see and we'll meet him later on in some future episodes he's unavailable to make it today but i mean this is some of the artwork that he's created and like this for example looks like a picture now you notice it's something different. Now you're noticing it's really something different. And now you notice that it's individual blocks that are actually painted different colors that are all comprised together to come up with that amazing picture. He made this piece of furniture. This is a replica of a piece that's inside of his house. The guy is amazing. This is the wood shop. Yeah, this is a wood shop. Um, Jason is a contractor by trade. Yeah, he's an artist. Um, Builds commercial uh, buildings, builds residential homes. Um, I think, you know, he's, you can probably see the camper. We've built three campers, uh, all based off of military trailers, and then we built the inserts that go in. They're all three completely different design campers, kind of specifically built around the person and their needs. This is just some of the stuff that you're working on. Tell us what you're doing right here with this. We're going to do some custom end links on these. I'm going to, you know, drill them out, face them off on the lathe, um, tap them end links, make our own custom. And I'm going to put a picture up for these guys to see what it is that that's going to be. But, uh, but I'm pretty impressed by it. And if anybody just likes making things, yeah. then they're going to be pretty impressed by it too. You've got JB's over here doing some welding on some, uh, some spindles here. Now, if you guys follow the channel at all, you know that I bent my spindles recently and that's a common problem with Toyota. So they're doing some welding right here to, to fix those. This is the solid axle that you're going to be putting in the Sequoia that we talked about earlier. Yeah. And this is what you got. Yeah, up is, here working. It's a 78 Dana uh, 44 high pinion 
Um, the, the truss uh, was made by Cal Fabrication. Uh, we welded it, JD welded it in house here. Reed Racing Knuckles. So originally the Dana 44 Ford came with a five lug and we we're gonna run Chevy Knuckles on it. So it's a six lug and it's the same bolt pattern as a Toyota so I can run match it up with my stock wheels jim i just gotta stop you and let you know that there's people out there right now that their heads are completely exploding <laughs> you're putting a ford axle yeah. with chevy knuckles, chevy knuckles on a toyota yeah. <laughs> sequoia got, yeah i got dodge uh ram 2500 shocks in the rear <laughs> and um, i love about, it um, you know we talked about the brakes earlier and i'm actually looking into brembo makes a six piston caliper that was on Volkswagens and Porsches, and I'm kind of looking into that, maybe putting those on. This could be a worldwide build before we get yeah, done with yeah, it, huh? Wow. All the manufacturers in. That's sweet, man. <laughs> so I grew up uh, taking machine shop classes in high school, and I, I mean, I've got a mill, and I've got a lathe, and well, the lathe work was always my favorite. I mean, it just, time for me just melts away working on the lathe, and uh, so, this one is a completely restored 1948 South Bend 9A. And it is, it's a light duty lathe. And so I like to prototype some parts, uh, prototype tools. Um, specifically, I've made a tool here. Um, a lot of people know on Toyotas that the front uh, differential needle bearing on the driver's side goes bad and so east coast gear supply makes a bushing uh to replace that needle bearing this is basically called a plane bearing and the, it has a teflon coating in here so i specifically take chunks of metal turn them into that and turn delrin down to protect the teflon and it makes a really nice insertion tool and so let's see, this one fits the seven and a half and it's a little bit wider here. So it actually uh, acts as a natural stop. So you don't have to guess when you're inserting this. Um, when you pound it all the way in, it stops where it needs to stop. Sweet. It takes the guesswork out of it. All right, well listen, Jim, I really appreciate you taking us around, showing yeah, us the shop, anytime, showing man. us the Sequoia. Um, I can't wait to get out on the trail with you. Yeah. Whenever you get this thing solid axle swap, I can't wait to see a tear up you are. It's yeah. gulches, I know it's gonna happen. So we're really looking forward to it. I think I speak for all of us when I say we're looking forward to it. But listen, man, I yeah, really appreciate you taking us around the shop. And thank you guys for taking a look at the Sequoia. I hope that you liked it. If you did like the video, make sure that you hit the like button. And if you want to see more episodes of Badass Builds, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, peace!